Reef Builders crew, Evie here in beautiful Colorado, and we are here at the Reef Builders studio. We're getting ready to bring you guys a whole bunch of new content here from the studio itself, and we're excited to show it to you. First up today, we're gonna to be showing you the top five unique corals that are actually here, and we're gonna hang out with Jack so we can get all the details. It's nice to see you again. It's nice to see you as well. Thank you very much. So today we're gonna to talk about your top five unique corals here in the studio. So who's number one? So to start, we're gonna start with the Manila Spy up here in the top left of this tank. It is a red Elkhorn Monty. Um, underneath bright light, it grows really bright red with pink and growth tips. That is stunning. Yeah. Now that is not to be confused with orange setosa, which branches. Yeah. Very, very thin branches are going on here. Yes, it's like similar coloration wise, but growth pattern wise, it's a whole different animal, you mm -hmm. know? It looks a little fragile. Yes, it is definitely fragile. You bump into it and you got five frags like instantaneously. Okay, so you can do accidental fragging and on purpose fragging with yeah, this Yeah, in one. fact, I'd say like, it's one of those corals like you're either like resetting the whole colony or you're accidentally fragging it constantly. So, oh, wow. you know what I mean? Like, right. it grows pretty darn fast and it grows really loose and you know, there's lots of space inside and all mm -hmm. that, so. And then, so you guys do have some frags of this one as yeah. well yeah we does have tons of frags in manila spy so that was does... one of jake's favorite corals um okay just because it is bright and he really liked elkhorn monty mm -hmm. um it's actually next to like an entirely different kind of elkhorn monty uh the jake adams crystal experiment there on the right you see that one's like plating and this one's totally branching so mm -hmm. so yeah so since you guys have frags of this scattered around the studio does that mean eventually we could see some of those going out Yes, across the that hobbies? will definitely be a, a Jake Adams lineage coral that we will be, uh, you know, retailing eventually. Oh, that would be fantastic. So you guys definitely keep your eyes out for that one because you could own a piece of this specimen from right here in the studio. So tell me about who was your selection for number two? Uh, my selection for number two is going to be this uh, green and purple um, Turbinaria heroinensis from uh, Jason Fox. That it's, is so unique. Yeah, so it's like partly purple, mainly green. Um, when Jake got it, it basically looked the same uh, as far as the, the ratio of purple to green, and he was pretty positive the green would take over. Mm -hmm. um, but luckily- it Looks like the purple's holding strong though. Yeah, it's definitely, uh, it's definitely holding its own. It's not getting taken over by the green, and it looks really cool. Um, I'd say that's like, Turbinaria heroinensis is like really unique to begin with, and you like almost never see it. Um, but the fact that that one's grafted just makes it like twice as yeah. cool. So yeah, that's way so, yeah, cool. Yeah, I definitely, uh, I definitely love that coral. Um, and then uh, the next coral on my list okay. is going to be the metalhead chalice. So there's actually a piece of it in here. There's a m much bigger, nicer colony that I'm sure we'll show B-roll of, but. Uh, this like silvery branching echinopora in the back. That is so cool. So it and has, they, they're similar looking, but yeah. just different enough. Yeah, and so like, so that's an echinopora. So that's basically like uh, the same genus as like uh, Hollywood Stunner Chalice. Okay. So that's why it has like the same texture as a Hollywood Stunner Chalice or like a Sprung Stunner Chalice, mm -hmm. but it's branching and it's like, uh, in some instances it's like really blue and in a lot of instances it's gray. Um, it's just a really weird looking coral and that's one that Jake was just like absolutely obsessed with and I see why because it's another coral that like you never see because I mean it, it kind of it blends in a little bit but it's the shape of it is so unique that you know I think that like a true reef hobbyist can definitely appreciate it so the ones that we have here at the studio are the only ones in captivity right now I can't find any, oh, wow. any information on them other than the articles that Jake has written on them so this guy right here this is the colony that Jake placed here himself and I've just been trying to basically shape it and keep it looking exactly how it did mm -hmm. initially when I got here. This so. is a really intricate looking branch structure because it's got knobs all throughout it. Yeah and those are actually like the polyps so like it that it's like I said it has like the same texture as like a Hollywood stunner or something like that but it's mm -hmm. branching. 
Okay, so then who's next? So number four is gonna be the guy right on the other side of him, that orange branching Samacora. Wow. Uh, that's another coral that typically grows flat, but in this case is branching. Uh, Jake had an obsession with that, uh, finding corals that you know grew in different ways, but were classic corals to the hobby, but like there were you know other growth forms and stuff like that. All right, so getting a different viewpoint of this one, you can really see it does have a branching structure, but it also looks like it encrusts yeah, as well. It does encrust, um, but most uh, Samacoras, they, all they do is encrust. So they'll basically just be like a completely flat, perfectly encrusting thing on your rock, mm -hmm. uh, kind of like a Cephastria. Mm -hmm. um, and it also has a branching form just like Cephastrias do. Um, and it's a, another coral that you almost never see, um, mainly because when, like for instance, when this coral came in, it was probably like, dirt brown, didn't really look nearly as interesting as it does now, so mm -hmm. it was probably just passed up. Eventually, Jake found it, and of course, Jake took it home and made it, you know, put it into a display and made it look awesome, mm -hmm. you know? And uh, I think it's just uh, another really super underrated coral that deserves more spotlight. So we have this one, we also have like a blue one, like it's like a green growth rim, um, uh, but we do not have like a mother colony of that one. But I also really like that one a lot too. And then next we're gonna do the Immortal Tort right here to the right. This is stunning. Yeah, this is my favorite shaped colony in the whole studio. And the reason it's growing like that is again, because of the pumps in the tank. It's just the water is just always getting pushed in this direction, no matter which pump it's coming out of. It pumps out of one at a time, uh, does like a lagoonal kind of thing. Uh, so the detritus gets pushed down to to this end. Mm -hmm. And these are thick branches. Yeah, so even for a tort, it's yeah. like really thick. Like the base is super thick and uh, yeah. So what about growth speed on this guy? So that that's growing surprisingly fast for a tort. So like, um, for instance, this organ tort over here on the right, also Acropora tortuosa is growing a lot slower and it's like coralites are more spaced out. Um, and then like this piece, the, the coral lights are really close together and it's, uh, you know, doubling. It's like, I'd say it's, it's grown probably twice as fast as it were into it while I've been here. Wow. Um, for whatever reason, a lot of people think that has to do with like how you frag towards, mm -hmm. um, like if you like get, start with like a mini colony or a frag or just like a couple polyps that can really change how the, how the actual colony develops and grows. Oh, wow. Okay. And then lighting looks like. Bright light. For this guy, you want bright light. The brighter the light, the prettier it's going to be. Um, you get more of like a bluish color instead of a dark purple with bright light. So, mm -hmm. And then it, you'll get those uh, really nice bright green polyps to kind of contrast with that. Mm -hmm. This piece, now I did see it last night when we were in here, and it does polyp out like at crazy. night. Yeah, at night it polyps out like crazy. Um, and uh, I'd say most acros do that because in like the wild, during the day, there's different animals that are going to be trying to pick at them and then they'll go to sleep at night and that's a good time for them to come out and feed. So, so yeah, I'd say most acros do that. Um, and like if you keep angelfish and stuff like that that potentially dip at coral polyps, you'll probably won't even see any polyps during the day and they'll only come out at night. So Right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Jack. I really loved all your selections because those are pieces that you really don't see yeah. typically every day. Yep. And that's... That's one reason I really like Jake is because he was always finding new weird stuff to look at. So, right. And there's quite a bit of that in here. So Awesome. Well, I hope that you guys all enjoyed this video as well. Jack, we will see you soon right. with more additional Reef Builder Studio content. Sweet. Sounds good. Sweet. I don't know. I don't know what we're doing. <laughs> we're just... That was a terrible handshake. Just ignore it. <laughs> no. We just keep that. So we'd be like, and